Hello, welcome to my presentation tonight. My name is Eric Langhorst and I'm a Walden student. I'm currently taking the course Leadership in Today's Schools. And uh, today I'm going to talk a little bit about the dual coding theory by Alan Pavio. Um, this is a, a cognitive theory that I've always kind of thought was very interesting because I like a lot of ed tech stuff and I'm always looking for ways to incorporate um, multimedia in my classroom. And I always wonder about whether or not um, that is actually the best method of presenting information. Uh, using images along with audio, so I thought it would be a neat uh, topic to research. So let's start talking a little bit about the, uh, the author of this theory, um, Alan Pavio. He was born in 1941. He's a uh, professor of psychology at the University of Western Ontario, and he is known as the, uh, the author of the dual coding theory and has over 200 articles um, published on this topic and uh, related topics. Uh, he started doing some research in the late 1960s, early 1970s, And uh, one of the uh, tests that he did was he had subjects uh, listen to a list of words and then also see a series of images. And then they had to recall um, the images and the words uh, both in the name or the the image, but then also in the order that they appeared. And he found that people remembered these things in much different ways. Uh, And so as they were collecting the data, he began to realize that uh, a logical interpretation of that was that people process information in two separate channels, an audio channel and a visual channel. Um, So basically that is the dual coding theory, that as we're sitting uh, in a presentation, we're accessing information visually and auditorily. Um, A good example of this would be you're sitting on your couch, you're watching the Discovery Channel, and uh, maybe you're watching a documentary on the rainforest. And so um, as you're watching the documentary, you're watching video footage of a rainforest, but you're also listening to somebody narrate about how the ecosystem works, how the plants and the animals work together in the rainforest. So you're uh, entering information in two different channels, visual and auditory, but then you're using that with your your one brain uh, to then be able to recall that information. Now there is quite a bit of research to support the dual coding theory. Uh, Anderson and Bauer in 1973 uh, confirmed that verbal information can be enhanced when you pair it uh, along with uh, visual information. So uh, this is something that we can use as teachers in our classroom. Again, whenever we're presenting information, if we can be uh, speaking about it, but then also showing some kind of meaningful visual, that's going to help quite a few of our students. Uh, Stone and Glock in 1981 did some research on college students, and I thought this was a really cool study because if you've ever put anything together the night before Christmas, uh, a bicycle for your child, um, in my particular case I can think of when we put together our crib for our first child, um, when you're looking at the instructions, the instructions are going to have a lot more uh, success with you uh, if you have illustrations along with the text. And uh, this was confirmed in the study by Stone and Glock. They did this with college students. They had some students just read assembly instructions uh, in a written format, and then they also added pictures to the second group. And uh, the group that had pictures did much better and committed uh, uh, a vast number of uh, fewer errors uh, when they had those pictures along with the text. So um, they kind of confirmed that whole idea of having pictures with the text being more helpful. And then uh, Levy and Lentz in 1982 went to the other side of the spectrum and went down to early childhood. And uh, they did some research with students who were learning to read. And they found that if you paired text along with illustrations that were meaningful, uh, that it helped those students learn how to read. Uh, In fact, it actually increased their success um, about one-third of the uh, an additional one-third as far as reading comprehension when they did that. And then it also allowed them to... um, have more uh, ability to then learn how to read in the future. And so these are things that have actually been incorporated into Head Start and some different early childhood programs. Um, In 2003, Meyer came out with some uh, research on multimedia and how it can either be effective or ineffective in a classroom setting. Uh, So as you're giving presentations, um, there are some specific things you can do to help people Uh, look at the visuals and understand the text along with the visuals. And um, this is something that we as teachers do many, many times throughout the year. Um, I'm sure most of us create some type of multimedia presentation in some format for our students at some point. Um, I know I do my notes as an 8th grade American history teacher um, using uh, PowerPoint presentations. Um, Just as kind of an aside, 
Microsoft has said that they uh, estimate that about 30 million PowerPoints are created each day uh, on the planet Earth, which just seems incredible to me. But um, I'm sure we've all sat through some presentations, uh, multimedia presentations, PowerPoints, that are uh, extremely redundant and probably don't have much effect. So I'm going to talk about four ideas that uh, Meyer actually came out of his research with in a, um, kind of talking about how you could be more effective in using multimedia. The first one was uh, using words and pictures rather than just words alone. So again, just the whole idea of using the text with the picture, uh, very similar to what Anderson and Bauer did, as we mentioned a little bit earlier today. Um, idea number two, presenting pictures and corresponding words or narrations uh, physically close together if you're showing them on a slide or to have them very close together in the presentation as far as time. So uh, making sure that you can really build that connection between the visual and the text uh, in your presentation. Idea number three, minimize irrelevant details. Um, I teach middle school, uh, basically junior high, eighth grade. And so I've seen lots of student presentations where they try and use every bell and whistle, everything's bouncing and screeching and spinning on the PowerPoint slide. Um, the more that you can minimize all the irrelevant stuff and just really get down to what's important, you're going to be that much more successful uh, with your presentation. And then idea four is presenting words as speech rather than on-screen text. Um, so if you can just have one big picture, for example, that really describes your concept and then have you in the background talking about it, that's going to be more effective than having a screen of text and then reading the text um, as people are, are reading it on the screen with you. Um, so I know we've all probably sat through presentations where people have put um, a whole bunch of text, an entire paragraph, for example, on one slide, and so you're trying to read it, and then at the same time the person's reading it to you, and it's almost like you're battling each other as far as those two channels of information. So um, trying to have uh, less words on the screen, a visual, and then pair them together. So I think the dual coding theory has a lot of implications for education. Um, Pavio himself even talks a lot in some of his recent research about how uh, this theory can be used in kind of changing the way that we do remediation for students that are learning how to read. Uh, so for example, in the, f in the past, a lot of the focus has been on how students decode the words, you know, and if they can look at a word and then tell the meaning, but that doesn't have a lot to do as far as comprehension. They're not really connected together. So if we can do a little bit more understanding about how these two different channels are used together, um, maybe we can help students with uh, some of their uh, problems, especially early on in reading. And then also he talks about um, quite a few uh, possible uh, ways that this can help math classes as well, using shapes, using colors um, to do visuals along with learning some of the math concepts. So um, I hope this helped a little bit today in describing the uh, dual coding theory. And um, as an educator, um, hopefully maybe you learned um, a little bit or uh, maybe just gave you a little bit to think about the next time that you create a multimedia presentation for your students. Um, so thank you very much for listening, and I hope you have a great day.